Uh, well, first of all, thank you everybody for being here. I'm Metal Barahona. I'm here by my side is Paco Gonzalez. I'm Paco Gonzalez and I'm a little bit nervous. It's my uh, first time in English. I'm teaching uh, through streaming the third time, but in English it's, it's the first time. Well, but we're really happy here and working side by side, it's going to be great. Uh, well, let us introduce you. The workshop is called Tactical Urbanism, as you, as you already know. Uh, it's about, Tactical Urbanism is about uh, the desire of architects and citizens to take back the street and the public space with the small interventions. Uh, we always like to show this image because we know it's not a new desire. It's a desire that architects and people ha had always have. So this is a Super Studio image from 60 years ago. Just a, just a minute, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll, we're going to send the link to, the link to Super Studio image mm. later. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. And well, we were talking about the desire of people to take back public space. That is not a desire or a, a, a thing only for architects. Um. Here. Uh, we always like to share this uh, quote by George Perec because he's not an architect, he's a citizen, a writer, and he's telling us the essence of tactical urbanism. Describe your street, describe another, compare. It, he's telling us to, that we need to know our public space. We need to understand how it works, to know how to act on it. We are going to do, uh, we, we are going to show only the keynote. It's uh, better to show both uh, the keynote and us to to be more interactive but uh, we think uh, we are getting problems rendering both uh, signals from the yes. webcam and the, keynote. and the keynote so we are trying to to stream with uh, only the keynote and then mm -hmm. uh, and then we can talk and and share a live <laughs> okay well, I'm going to put the screen now in George Perec quote. It's okay? Okay. Let's go. So, we were talking about George Perec, a writer. Yes, French writer. <laughs> and always at uh, this uh, slide, uh, Ethel and I uh, <laughs> will talk uh, about um, start to talk about, well, he's a writer, describe your street, uh, but I think it's important to think that storytelling and narrative, uh, nowadays it's a very, uh, how can I say, a very important thing to architects and citizens, because uh, for 30 years, uh, the, history is, the history is wiped out and we have to take the the street back yes it's very important to know that or to take conscious that architects has been really far away from the from a street and public space in the last years the desire of being a star architect and all all we know that happens in the past 10 years has been very far away from this concept but cities are inhabited by people, so we need to go down again, leave the street, see the street, understand the street, to know how to act on our cities. Now it, it works. Yes, it's going. <laughs> we are so ugly and uh, live stream doesn't <laughs> like us. <laughs> uh, but, well, the live stream has always have some minutes of delay, so we need to look it on <laughs> in the other computer so you can understand the link between image and what we are telling 
So, uh, ok, thank you, Sara, Sara Armento. Uh, well, we are showing some images, but I don't know how it, why it doesn't up loud about how people use the street. <laughs> Let's go on. Okay. Uh, in the past years, people start using the streets uh, as a place for working, for walking, for going out. But we, it's going on? Yes. And we sometimes are surprised to see some mixed uses of the street. Sometimes people is, I don't know if you are looking at the, at the image now, there is a, a street vendor with a PC on his knees. This is a perfect, a perfect example of how to use the street as, as it has been done for everything that you want. So if you look at, uh, at, at this picture, uh, you, you can imagine that he is talking with someone at the Facebook or Twitter and... Uh, or asking for a job, for, for, for example. example. <laughs> and we are wondering that uh, the, the, the narrative, the storytelling is not only on the streets. We, are, we speak always as... Uh, we have to think the street as an urban hybridization instead digital and uh, analogical. So uh, he's... Help me. Yes. <laughs> no, this is a perfect example of urban hybridization in the most basic approach. You can see here uh, an analogic work, the street vendor trying to to have his incomes, but also with digital links to the rest of the world. So this takes us to the new sense that we have uh, been living in the past, I don't know, in the past year maybe, with the economical crash, that people has gone out again to take the street, but not only as a place to stay or a place to work, but also as a place to political reivindication. I think uh, that all the people that is viewing the stream more or less know what has been happen happening in the streets in the past year with the indignados <laughs> take the street or this week take Wall Street, all these movements are giving us a new sense of what the people want uh, in, this, in cities. People need to have a space for manifestation, for reivindication, for getting closer instead of only living in the social networks. This is the start point of communication, but then it all goes to the public and physical space. Uh, you can see here, well, this is a very local image, but as we have been living this... Really? It's very local? Is it very local? <laughs> well, Francesco knows about that. <laughs> so, uh, how can we explain that uh, when uh, we were at uh, 15M here in Spain, uh, everybody all around the world knows about it? Uh, some friends of us uh, from Canada, uh, from Latin America, ask uh, Etel and me that, uh, okay, what is going on there on Madrid? What is going on on Barcelona? So we have a new uh, power uh, that are digital tools. So uh, we think, or we believe. We believe, more deeply than, believe. <laughs> more than think that these tools uh, are going to be possible uh, a new way to to define, to design, uh, to work with the public space. And uh, we are not uh, only experts. Uh, we are users. We are users. <laughs> All of us are users. Uh, you, you don't have to learn about uh, CAD uh, like CAD. Uh, to to draw the city, 
you only have to go uh, to Google Maps and pick some, uh, uh, how can I say, chinchetas? Uh, pins. Uh, some pins and draw a map about what is, what, what is right, what is wrong uh, about the city. So uh, there are a few uh, concepts. Yes, there has been a, a lot of com emergent concepts in the past years uh, trying to define this new approach to the cities and to the street. People talk about tactical urbanism, do-it-yourself, activism, special practices, bottom-up, guerrilla urbanism, public space. And more or less, we can define that all of them has common links. Maybe they have a small differences in between, but the common link uh, is the scale, starting for that. And the most interesting approach of tactical urbanism itself is not only the scale and the do-it-yourself approach, but the use of digital tools to, to complement the way you understand, share, interact, and design the public space. So, uh, the last... This is your favorite. Yes. <laughs> well, um... At the schools of architecture or urbanism, uh, we have learned that uh, the city is defined by planification. So you have a main uh, objective, or main or principal objective, then you define goals to, to bring the, uh, this objective to come true, and then you put the tools and the planification and uh, so on instruments uh, that defines a uh, top-down structure to make the city so uh, not only us uh, people like Mimi Seeger, uh, Dan Hill, uh, all people that we referred in the in the last mm, post Juan Freire here in Spain uh, things that uh, a way to to improve the cities it's uh, taking the power back to the people and getting them the tools to make city. Because if you don't like a thing, you have to do it yes, the yourself. The best thing to change something is to act. Because being sitting down and criticizing, it's so easy. But if nobody do some something to change this urbanism and planification in large scale, uh, cities will never change and will never respond to the needs of its inhabitants. So we always like to show this quote by Brian Lamb because it's the start point of all the concepts we have shared before about do-it-yourself, tactical urbanism, guerrilla urbanism. So it's the start point to go to the next stage that is tactical urbanism itself. It is a bottom-up approach. Uh, what we mean with bottom-up is uh, some special practices that starts without, without any professional approach. They are made by citizens because they live in the neighborhoods, they live in the cities, and they know which changes they need. So, um, can... As always, Etel, Etel and I have uh, some some difference in the... <laughs> yes, <laughs> but this is the best thing to being here talking. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, usual, we, we, we talk about citizens, but other people uh, prefer to talk about inhabitants. Yes. Because citizens, uh, it's more like the people who live in, in a city and who is sensitive. Yes, be? yes. Okay. Uh, and the that has a number, has an a, ID. <laughs> an ID for the, for the, how can I say, Ayuntamiento? Uh, city Hall. City Hall or the state. So uh, there are some inhabitants that uh, they, haven't, they, they haven't this number, but they, they live in the city. So it's a Latin approach to, to the world, but uh, in an English way. We know that uh, citizen, citizens is the, the right word to, to define this. Um, could you 
Yes, well, yeah. we have this this image. When you can read or if you want to take note, even if we share it, the presentation, and we have shared yesterday the concept in a post, but here is condenser the meaning of tactical urbanism. You know, uh, it says about, it talks about deploying pop-up parks, back and retail. We have seen all these like guerrilla activities, or for example, the activities that the other team of Dreamhammer has been doing in Norway these weeks. This is a perfect example of what we know as tactical urbanism. Uh, according to all of what we have talked, oh, ah, there is an answer, okay. Uh, here is a, a quote by Ruth Keffer who wrote the do-it-yourself urbanism uh, book and she says, who, you, what, change, where, the city, when, now, how? Do it yourself. This, this is condensed in five lines, the whole concept of tactical urbanism, and it's going to be our start point uh, and the approach we want to have for the four sessions we are going to use for design or for proposed ideas for the start Start to get a square. Start to get. <laughs> I'm not sure about the name. My my Nor Norwegian is not good. <laughs> so we are going to stop uh, now, and we are going to to answer the questions, and we are going to to try to show our faces to to answer the question, mm -hmm. and well, uh, we are going. To if live stream permits us. So we have to make this. Yes, I think Sara is having a, an interesting conversation there. And this. Okay. So let's see what Sara is. I like to have Hasim here in the workshop because all the thi all the reivindications we have been living in Spain are very close to what you were living in Egypt too. So it can give us an idea that is not a, a thing we like or we love to to work only locally. It's a, a new approach, I think worldwide. Okay. Is it good now, the, the, the streaming? Okay. Okay, and what is Sarah asking that she says is not sure? Uh, A clear idea about what? What architects, what, what experts have to do in this situation? Oh, I think the first, well, I, no. <laughs> I think the first thing that experts have to do is to stop watch, understand, and try to learn from the cities. Then you can act, but every city is different. So the first thing is, is stop and understand your context. I think this is my personal point of view. Well, I don't uh, know, what do you think? <laughs> the same like you, <laughs> but uh, we have to, to way down the stairs <laughs> From top to the to the bottom, mm -hmm. and try to learn for from other people uh, the things that uh, are important, uh, social, culture, uh, and then try to apply uh, how this this these uh, things can be managed and facilitate uh, and how to facilitate to people to to make the city. <laughs> so our role is like facilitators. Yes. If <laughs> Francesco, you're being so bad. <laughs> of course, we do not consider us as an experts. We are in constant learning, but what is true is that it's a, an issue that really, really interests us. And we have been researching 
about this for more than a year. So I think maybe the word expert is not the best, but what we like most is to share what we have read, learned, apply sometimes. And this is the, the main issue that we want to share here. So for example, uh, we have forgotten as always that if we don't put a license, it's copyrighted. And we think that that work of uh, tactical urbanism has to be at least Creative Commons by Sharalike. Uh, all the words and all the comments uh, we, are, we are doing because other, other um, sources uh, has he, its own copyright uh, license. So uh, I think Francesco will be fascinated at the Google Hangout, Hangout uh, workshop because we are going to to be less experts than than you you can <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> yes, well, I uh, I try and trying to answer to Sara, no, not to Francesco. That is metiéndonos caña. <laughs> uh, I think the new roles of the architect are are going to be not one role. There are going to be many roles because if we are talking that the first thing is to understand and analyze the context depending on the needs of this neighborhood or this uh, city, we can do different things uh, related with our knowledge, our profession, uh, designing, understanding, but maybe it's not going to be always the same answer and the same role. So, uh, Ecosistema has told us that um, we have to work uh, with uh, store target. Mm -hmm. uh, I think store target uh, means store to, target. Uh, square, square at yes. the same time. So Maybe Francesco can confirm this on the chat. <laughs> uh, so we are going to show uh, you some uh, pieces of uh, the Dream Amar project that uh, we are going to use at the workshop because there are yes. less 25 minutes. Yes. So yes. it means main square. Main okay. square. Okay. Thanks, Francesco. So uh, can we start to? We're going to turn off the webcam again, so you can see the screen. Is that okay? I don't know if he's listening. Okay, right. let's go. Well, okay, let's go here. Okay. okay. And again. <laughs> well, even if Ecosistema Urbano has shared the booklet a few days ago, we have selected some images because uh, not only we don't want to this session to be not only a, a talk about tactical urbanism as an abstract stuff, but we want to focus in Hammer. So in the next session, we are all uh, all of us are more prepared and to the approach we want to have in the store store get <laughs> or main square. <laughs> So we have been looking at Google Maps too for some images and want to share you the ideas and the location and how the place works in the context related with the with the sea and with the rest of the blocks around. So you can see here some images. We have should have put a circle there. Okay. <laughs> no, we can. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's yeah. going to move. Oh. But <laughs> we really don't see where it's <laughs> it. <laughs> so you see uh, a parking uh, in the center of the image. And now there's uh, it is the use of the of the of the square. So <laughs> Viva Google Maps. Yes, yes, we are talking about <laughs> tactical urbanism, and there's something very important to to us that that 
10 years ago, only experts, architects, urbanizers, uh, have the knowledge and, and the resources to, to look at the city. Now, with Google Maps and other maps uh, like OpenStreetMap or mm -hmm. that is it's a free uh, free use map and uh, we can learn about the cities not only the experts mm -hmm. uh, uh, everybody can uh, can have knowledge about the context the surrounding places the size or a scale of a place so it can be easier to think how to interact with that specific place. Here we can see an historical approach on how the city have, has been growing since 1848 until now. And what we were talking before, the relationship it has to the sea, that it's very important in that context. So it can give us uh, some ideas on which kind of uh, interventions or small things we want to do in the in the square. So there are two axes uh, at the square. Uh, one is uh, that sign up with the arrow, in blue arrow. But there's another axis uh, you can see at the what can I say? Uh, at the bottom, the bottom of at the, the bottom of the image. That is a commercial street that cuts perpendicular uh, the, the the blue arrow at the top of the image. So, <laughs> yeah, sorry, Francesco, that's true. <laughs> the lake. Okay, sorry. <laughs> blue is like like, <laughs> like sea. Yes. But also like <laughs> like lake. <laughs> so. Uh, it's more about uh, 90 per 90 meters mm -hmm. yes and uh, uh, as always um, Norway there have uh, some degrees different from the south for example in Barcelona yes. we have eight degrees of uh, maximum um, sun angle okay eight degrees Yes. Minimum, sorry, <laughs> and 50 degrees. But we are going to tell some sort of things that uh, Jaime explained us uh, the last week. Uh, it's a square. Uh, Norwe uh, Norwegians are used to use the square at below 10 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. and uh, Etel and I were surprised that uh, people use the square at 10 degrees Celsius. Yes, that way, that's why we choose this image because I don't know, many of us are from hot places. <laughs> I can see from Egypt, from Italy, from here, among other places. So we can remark, we wanted to remark the, the different climate climate uh, but also the different kind of uses because if here is a place at 10 degrees I don't know maybe I will be hidden at home watching TV with a coffee in my hands but people there loves to go out and is you are used to that just, just a minute so uh, the, the, oh. the stream uh, likes stuck so Again? No. Ah, ah no, no. Okay. okay. Can you see it now? I think there's uh, more or less one or two minutes of delay from what we are talking and uh, what we are talking on the chat. So, okay, let's okay. go. Okay, yes. So we want to remark Sorry. these difference, differences because uh, what we were talking before as the basis of tactical urbanism if, is to know the place. And the important thing of working with digital tools and being all of us worldwide is to use the, these digital tools to have a, a closer approach to the, to the place and know how to design or propose something for it. So we have to forget about our local context, about our, our local ideas, 
and try to concentrate and get to know better the place. And I I will start uh, stopping calling the sea to the lake. <laughs> and this will be a great start point <laughs> to get closer to the Stortergate Square. So, uh, thanks to Ecosistema, we have more or less uh, a brief description on the booklet and it's important to, to look at a, a cultural center that is being built now at the uh, west side of the, of the square. Uh, this building will mean a lot of. Uh, will have a great impact. A great yes Adele. on the on the square because it's a huge building and a a new building. So citizens need needs to get used to that. But also we need to take it in in count when designing something for the square. So uh, in the other axis from east to west. There's a commercial street. You can see it because there's uh, a study of views. Uh, and then uh, the, the vertical axis on the image from the church to the lake uh, confronts to, to the other axis. Uh, the commercial streets will continue uh, below the building. So we can imagine that um, uh, this axis will uh, make the will sorry uh, will will the city grows uh, to the west, okay? Yes, and it will be will be an important place of circulation. So we should. Uh, understand that so many of the people that visit the square will come from there. Here are some street Google Street Views. So you can see all the all the surroundings. Okay. Okay. Here is the the actual use of the of the square that is used as a parking. So I think the it will it has a great potential to think on how to use it related to the new building to the, all the people that we come from this axis that Paco was explaining and with the other axis that take it to the lake I think it has a great potential and we can have and exchange some ideas within these four sessions to come so and this is a great picture. I love it. What? <laughs> I ah. love this picture because it's almost li like tactical urbanism. <laughs> so we are, yeah. we are trying. Uh, Francesco is telling us that uh, uh, it's important to. Um, or that that is not important to talk a lot of uh, about the place in this moment of the session. Oh. Okay, we we have a, a theory. We have to to take down the stairs and uh, uh, put us Adele and I at the same level of the of the students. So we have thought that uh, this is, this is, is it's very important to share our vision about the place uh, because we don't have to uh, change their their mind. Uh, with our uh, prejudice, yes. So sharing our thoughts, we are uh, we are going to fight against that prejudice. <laughs> you know, we we were planning this session, and we decide to show these uh, images and to talk about it because of two main two main ideas in mind. One, if for our our own knowledge of the place. But the second one is because most of you all sh should know, I, I know that you have been following some other sessions, etc., that we use case studies to explain what is tactical urbanism. So in the next session, when we talk about these case studies, we are going to focus not in the action or in the design, but in the concept. 
And if we have this idea of what is a store to get in mind, we can uh, understand the links of these new special practices and try to know which one of them can be a, 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 a catalyst for doing some new projects here. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, Francesco, uh, it doesn't matter. It's, <laughs> uh, it's better this thing. So network design. Uh, I, I really don't know where, where we are. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, here we want to talk about the strategy of network design that it's what we are going to use uh, for the four working sessions. You know that uh, we have said so many times that tactical urbanism is based on the hybridization be between the, the physical and the digital. So the network design will allow us to know and to Sorry. use these tools. Sorry, that just, just uh, a comment. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, now the, we are talking about hybridization because we are here in Spain. Yes. Uh, if we were at a Dream Ama, uh, or sorry, at a store, store target square, <laughs> uh, we will talk about other things. And uh, we are focusing on the hybridization of the purpose of this uh, workshop uh, and I think we don't we don't uh, how can I say argument arguing mm -hmm. uh, sí. that tactical urbanism is like uh, digital urbanism so exactly <laughs> so sorry Yes, yes, no, it's just to talk about the, the use of these digital tools, but always trying to get closer to the physical place because people live in that and uses that physical place. So uh, the network design strategies will allow us to think in with an hybrid mind and with hybrid approach to design a strategies and uses and sometimes objects that can be placed on the on the store target and this is the purpose of the of the whole workshop basically to talk and to learn about tactical urbanism but know how to use this knowledge and design something for the so we have uh, that table and we have uh, mm -hmm that artifacts and uh, to to manage to get the people closer to the to the process of design and we have other uh, other things like this uh, or the today at the morning they, uh, there was a, a co uh, a cop no uh, see si. <laughs> a co in facebook <laughs> that it brings a uh, coffee uh, and milk to to the people so we are talking that we have to use uh, the square and we are very um, proud to participate uh, on a design that uh, you can uh, how can I say in that paint, paint. <laughs> I'm getting tired uh, <laughs> The, the square and to feel uh, the square like another different thing than uh, a place to park a car. So yes, this is one a wonderful image because you can see this is the whole concept of bottom up. You don't see a <laughs> you can see all the citizens here enjoying. And an important thing is that when you work in something from the start and with your own hands, you take care of this place most than if somebody else do it for you and another thing that is very important for me it's uh, they are playing yes they are not working they are uh, only playing uh, and feeling the square so yes. we can go on yes this is the square almost finished the painting strategy and the results so the results are evident. This is very far away from the the first image we saw with lot of cars and the typical lines of 
parkings painted down there. So what are we going to do in the workshop? Because uh, we are at the zero session mm -hmm. and we are testing how to share our thoughts. Uh, but what is about? What is about tactical urbanism workshop for Green Mama? <laughs> this is very important because uh, the main idea behind all of this that we have been talking is how the practice is changing uh, just as Sarah were asking how we can address to social, political and environmental issues how we can respond to all these needs of the people it's not making the mega cities that were built uh, 10 years ago we think that it's a a bottom up approach exchange ideas know the place and get to know what people need in that place so this is all about tactical urbanism so uh Yes. Sorry. Nope. This is the sentence that uh, Adele was talking about. Uh, we really don't know how how time was it uh, at, this, at, at your screens. So uh, we are going to the next slide and to try to explain uh, how are we working with tax. Yes. I think just, just uh, sorry for interrupt. I think as the workshop is the next step, maybe we can have two minutes to answer questions. Questions, okay. Because for example, Susana is asking that if bottom up is complementary to top down or not. Yes, we think it's complementary because I don't think that all what we have learned from the last hundred years it's a mistake. For sure there are so many interesting and, and usable concepts on top down, but I think it needs a complementary approach from the bottom up, from the people, as we were saying, because uh, the local people is who knows, who knows its neighborhood and who knows what they need. So if you can make a, a, a complementary approach, I think it's a good solution and it's the new way that maybe things and cities will start working in the future. So I don't know what, I agree what do you, you think? I agree with you. It's not, uh, uh, it's not one, one, or, against one the other. or zero, black or white. It's, uh, there are many uh, grades of, of gray. So mm, really don't know what is going on with the slides because we have another slide with a uh, workshop tax can you tell me to can you tell me that what are you looking what at what are you looking <laughs> at <laughs> urska is looking at nothing <laughs> there's like still text text, text. Ah, the okay. text you copied. Okay, so let's really go again. What? Maybe? No. Okay. Now. Okay. Now we are looking at it. Uh, Thank you, everybody. N now we have a new slide. Are, can you see it? Yes, work tax. Perfect. Thank you, Fabricio. Thank you. Uh, so, we have uh, gathered some of the cases of study that we are uh, picking up from internet in four tags. The first tag is uh, narrative and storytelling. The second is community or collective because uh, these words mean uh, different things. Communi community is a closed uh, uh, group, group of, mm -hmm. of people and collective is, is an open a group of people, a documentation and archive, mm -hmm. and uh, the last of the tags, it's open uh, 
P2P design. P2P. Mm -hmm. Design P2P or? or network design. Uh, this concept is from Open P2, uh, P2P uh, Design, uh, Massimo Menichinelli. Mm -hmm. You can follow him uh, uh, at oh. Open P2P Design. design. <laughs> and uh, we are sharing some slides from his uh, thesis mm -hmm. in the next minutes when we are at the uh, on Google Plus. On Google oh, Plus. Isn't it? Yes. And uh, it's time for, I think, questions. Yes. Okay, so. Do you have questions? Or answers? Maybe, <laughs> maybe answers. Maybe answers to all of our questions. <laughs> Please. <laughs> By the way, it, it makes sounds like a joke. But the most interesting thing about networking and collaborative approach is not the, the usual uh, vision of a teacher in one side and students in the other side. We are all of us, a group, and we are, we are all learning from each other. So if you have, have some comments, ideas, questions, please use the chat, we are reading now. Okay, okay, Javier. Javier has uh, one question related to the online, online tools. tools. Okay. Go on. Uh, Javier is asking us that don't you think that the tools available now I know that smooth, and we think he's continuing writing. Smooth computer scientists have developed V2 <laughs> for their, their interest. interest. Well, I, I, I don't know. I think, Javier, that we have great tools, or at least we have more tools than 15 years ago, and this is a great thing because now we can not only travel to a city without being physically there, but we can listen to comments, we can know how people use a, a space, you can use Twitter to ask a question and local people will answer. No, you don't have to go to a book published 15 years ago to know how people use that space. So I think that we have enough tools and most important the, is not the tool, it's the way that you use that tool that we have to, we are going to discuss and learn how to use here. I, I don't know, I think it's... Uh, I think it's, it's we, we can try to explain with a blog. Uh, 50 years ago, uh, you have to write it down uh, some knowledge uh, on, a, on, a, on a paper you have to uh, bring that paper to an editor. That editor uh, has to approve or not. Uh, that is uh, true. That it, it is good or not. Or not. And Make then corrections. You, you <laughs> re rewrite it. <laughs> so now you have a blog. You can write. You can share. You can be commented. Uh, you not only have to write, you can make videos and share them. It's it's a very useful useful change for us. We are talking about tools, not uh, visualization. We are talking about blog, uh, Twitter, uh, communication tools. Yes. So what do you think about it? I think the, the best approach we can have as students and teachers is to know the tools we have and have the best approach to use them. Hello, we are... Uh... Uh, Javier has answered, I agree, but 
still says modify the way you understand things, right? Sorry, Javier. Yes, Javier. Yes, that that I agree in that point. If you only look at this superficially, but what we are trying to do, even with, for example, with using the square images on this first session, is is to have a a most local and physical approach to to the task we have in front of us for the next month. So I think it's it can be this uh, this re restrictive stuff can be avoided on the use we do to of the tools. I don't know if I I think it all depends on on the way you use them. So. We are going to to have a. Uh, sorry. Is there any any question on the chat? Any other question? Uh, Salarmento mm -hmm. is. Okay, Francesco Imaginoteca is talking to Javier at the chat mm -hmm. and he's uh, uh, telling Javier that. Uh, yeah, I, I think they can read this. It's okay, not. So I think that uh, Sara. Sara. Yes, I think you're right because tactical urbanism or, or also urban hybridization, as Fabrizio is studying in Milano, are so new that maybe they are not so evident in every place but this is the what is the reto the um, challenge this is the challenge we have to make visible and to use the the square of hammer as a laboratory to try to give visibility to this kind of tools and how to properly use them so i i agree with you but i i am positive that we're going to to do a, an interesting experiment all together. Um, I, I always uh, use a sentence. Uh, we are talking about tools, uh, low fi mm. low cost, high fidelity. So, okay, who's guy? It's, the chat yeah. is going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have to make a, 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 a pause. A pause. Uh, we are going to wait back in a five, uh, seven minutes. So we, we recommend to watch the video. We recommend to, to watch the video and we are going to continue with the Google Hangout. Google Hangout. 